Hello! In today's video I will be attempting to diagnose and fix my Logitech Z333 speakers. The issue I'm having is my right speaker, the speaker that should deliver the right channel of audio, is being really intermittent and the signal keeps like cutting and going. Sometimes there's audio through the speaker, other times there's no audio through the speaker and stuff like that. With that said, let's get into the video. Okay, so now I'm going to show you the issue I'm having. I'm currently in Audacity and I'm just going to generate some noise. I'll just generate some white noise, set it like that. So now I've generated some white noise. The channel is mono. With this track being mono, this signal will be sent to both the speakers equally. So in principle, they should be the same volume. And if I go to the little pan thing here you can see I can set it to left and right but I will set it in the center which will further ensure that both speakers are sent the same signal so now to the left speaker I'll just put the camera here and just play the audio so to the left speaker it sounds like this So the left speaker is able to receive and output the signal, but now moving over to my right hand speaker, which is here, if I just put the camera in roughly the same place. And it sounds like that. Now, I appreciate that you may have been able to still hear the left speaker just, but if both the speakers were receiving the same signal, they would be equal volumes, which I can tell by looking at the microphone monitor on the camera that there was near enough no sound outputting from this right hand speaker. But now I'm going to remove my speaker setup and put it into a more controlled environment where I can get on with diagnosing and hopefully fixing the issue. Okay, so this is now my setup for like testing and diagnosis, I guess. So over here I've got my laptop with the same generation of white noise. I've got my right speaker over here, which is the black one. So as you can see here, it shows right is the black one and left is the blue one. So I'll plug the black one into the, the black one, the blue one into the blue one. And here I have my left and right channel and my little volume control. And I've just got this power cord coming in and uh, plugged in there. So now let's hit play. Just turn the volume up a bit. And my left speaker. As you can hear, there is noise coming from my left speaker, but the right speaker. There is a tiny bit of noise, but it is a lot, lot quieter volume when compared to the left speaker. Now I'm going to unplug one of the speakers. I've just unplugged the wrong speaker. I've now unplugged my right speaker. So I'm just using my left speaker here and I'm going to plug my left speaker into both the left and right channel. And if the issue is an output issue regarding the output from the subwoofer here, then the left channel should be louder than the right channel. And I will be doing this test on both the speakers to determine if it is a fault with one of the drivers in the speakers or if it is an output issue. So I will now just play the white noise. I'll do it all in one take. So this is the left channel. This is the left speaker and the left channel. Unplugging that, plugging it into the right channel. It is quieter. It is noticeably quieter. I'm not, I haven't adjusted the volume. I'll put the volume knob there. So plugging it into the left channel again. Notice how much quieter the right channel is. Okay. Okay, so with this speaker, the right channel is noticeably quieter. So just putting that out of view. Now bringing in the right speaker. 
plugging it into the right channel sounds like that plug it into the left channel again the right channel is slightly quieter than the left channel right so with both speakers the right channel is quieter than the left channel therefore that leaves me to believe that the issue is not with the speakers as both the speakers appear to be working fine and the results are consistent across both the speakers those results being the right channel output from the subwoofer is noticeably quieter than the left channel output from the subwoofer which means it's probably an output issue with the subwoofer because the results are consistent between the speakers can you even disassemble this i don't think so because it's made of wood i am aware this may void my warranty but believe it or not, this is actually my second pair of Logitech Z333 speakers because my original pair also developed this same fault. But at the time, as my warranty was still in date, I went through the warranty process and got this replacement speaker set. And now, maybe a year and a half after getting this replacement, this replacement has developed the same fault. However, my warranty is no longer valid, so now I'm just going to go ahead and try and find the cause of this issue. Could it be because these cables are bundled up like this? Potentially, but I don't think so because these cables have always been like this, but yeah, this issue has only really occurred over the past month, maybe two months. Now I guess I'll unscrew this panel and see if I can even take it out because I don't know, I don't know what this looks like on the inside. I do know it is made of wood because I can see like bits of wood through the edge here. It looks like MDF and it's probably glued together. There's all of the screws out. Now I guess, can I lift this panel? We'll just point out it is not plugged in so the likelihood of me getting electrocuted is low but there could be high voltage capacitors in here which can hold quite a shock if you get shocked by them so I need to be careful about those so you can see this shield here that's held in place there appears to be a screw that's in that side which holds this shield in place there's also another screw point there but there's no screw in that one there's a huge capacitor there there that black one so I'm going to keep away from that as that's probably one of those capacitors that holds a very large voltage so far the construction of this appears to be one of those constructions where when it is assembled it cannot be disassembled without breaking it so it's sort of like a one-way journey once it's put together you can't take it apart again without damaging it or destroying it oh there's lots of hot glue in place can you see that Yes you can, down here, where my thumb is. I can understand the purpose of them using hot glue, but just why? What is that? Why have they glued the connectors in place? You don't glue those connectors. These connectors here, you can see there's like a glue on them that's flaking off these are those connectors that clip into place you don't need to glue them why have they glued them like glue on these type of connectors is not necessary like i guess they glued them just to ensure that they wouldn't come apart which makes sense but at the end of the day these are those connectors that are designed to clip together and not come apart because they clip together so while gluing them in place should in theory keep them in place is just an extra manufacturing step that will cost logitech more money and it also means that when technical people such as myself take them apart they get really annoyed because these are those connectors that you don't glue they, they, oh, hmm. you don't glue these connectors and whatever glue they've used is flaking off and useless anyway Right, so here this connector appears to be like the volume L out, so I'm guessing that's volume left, volume right. 
the VC power, the volume lin, not sure what lin means, you've got SND and then volume right one on this white connector here and then on this red connector we have line right, line left and ground is the central one. What's the soldering look like on these? Because they do sound like possibly the culprit on the issues I'm having. So it's a soldering on these pins here that I'm checking. They all look okay. I can't see any faults with them. I can't see any cracks or anything. Everything appears to be okay. My only issue with doing this is I don't own a multimeter therefore even though I have found the ground connector on this PCB I cannot check the polarity on that to make sure the ground on this PCB is connected to the ground on this 3.5 millimeter jack. But if I had a multimeter I'd basically be able to prong the ground pin there and prong the ground bit here and then I should get a reading that lets me know that that ground is connected to this ground. But I don't have a multimeter so there's no way for me to test that unfortunately. And looking at this plug here, the earth pin, which is this pin, is plastic. That means there is no earthing in this speaker setup. Whereas if I pull out my lights here, this has a metal earthing pin so that if there is a short circuit, then that short circuit of grounded electricity will go back through the cable and in back into the plug socket via this earthing pin which in theory will prevent electric shocks should someone touch something that has earthed. But with this speaker, the earth pin is plastic, so there's no earthing at all in this speaker set. I can't seem to get this out any further without damaging it. I can see right down in there, there looks to be a power connector, judging by the thickness of those cables. And there's also another smaller cable which could potentially be another power connector but what it is for certain I'm not sure. So many cables too much of a mess. I've already established that I can't get this out any further than that but if I remember correctly my old Logitech subwoofer just sort of pulled off and then I could unscrew the speaker. Maybe I can do the same here. Maybe I can do the same here. I don't know for definite. Can I? Oh, yep, there we go. This bit should just lift off. It shouldn't be glued. No, it's not glued, it's just press fit. And now I can undo this speaker. Really should go and get my little plastic screw holder bits. Right, so there's the main driver for this sub. Oh, there's a power board in there. And there you can see this board, which is the power board by the look of it. That's essentially the power supply for the entire speaker setup. And then if I tilt the camera around that way, that green board is basically the control panel that I've been trying to get out. Now it looks like it connects. The power board connects to the power supply there, so if I can unplug that, which it looks like I can, it doesn't look like it's glued in, and it is a clipped connector on there. And then the other end of this subwoofer speaker is connected to the power board, which I don't know if I'll be able to get that out, but let me... Okay, so I've unplugged that one, that's good. Now I need to try and unplug this subwoofer from that control panel at the other side. If I'm very careful with what I do here, I might be able to unplug this subwoofer and then I might be able to get this control board out. Oh, of course, of course Logitech have glued the subwoofer connector. They've glued every connector except for the power supply one which was the one that I just unclipped. They've glued everything all except for this connector here. Logitech, why do you do this? What I don't get is it's a clipped connector, the same as this one, but yet they glued it. They don't need to glue it. It's a connector with a clip on it. It's not going to come unclipped unless you physically unclip it like I did with this one. They didn't glue this one, but they glued all the others. Why? 
Let me just put uh, two screws back in to hold this subwoofer in place while I try and figure out how to unplug it from the other side. Okay, now that is put back in place, can I wiggle this connector out? If I do get it out, how will I get it back in? This is stuff I need to think about before I get it out. If I unplug that connector like that, there's those connectors unplugged. Now the subwoofer will still be connected, but now I've unplugged the secondary connector that I missed before, I might be able to pull the control panel out a bit further, which will give me better access to it. And... There we go! Haha! <laughs> right, so this is the heat sink for that chip there. I forgot the name of it. So this aluminium acts as a heat sink for that. Do you see there? That yellow stuff is some kind of glue that Logitech feel the need to put on even though it is a clipped connector that doesn't need gluing. And strangely enough, the other end of this connector, which is also a clipped connector, has not been glued. Why do they feel the need to glue certain connector bits but not other connector bits? I don't understand. The base adjustment is just a pentiometer or whatever they're called. There's that there, that's probably holding the face plate on. Don't know if I'll be able to remove the face plate or not because they look like they are holding it in place. So to remove this aluminium heat shield and heat sink, it looks like that screw, that screw, that screw and that screw. And then I should have access to the main board. Now it does look like these are held on with some form of resin or something, but I'm hoping I'll just be able to break the seal of that by unscrewing the screw. Yes, I can do. I may need my pliers for this. I do have a socket set. Oh no, these tweezers are working fine. I was going to say, I do have my socket set, but I don't know how I'll fit a socket in this tiny little space. There we go. Now I have access to this main board. See, the glue that Logitech uses just like... didn't even work. Somebody's got a Lamborghini. Looks like this surface mounted board is about ready to break off. But at least I now have access to the PCB. I have no idea what to look for, so I guess I'll just look for any surface mounted damage or loose connections. I would quite like to get these connectors out. Okay, I think I've got about as much glue off of these connectors as I possibly can. The main thing is, it's the inside where the pins are that I need to be worried about. Not this outside bit, but... There is still a little bit on this red one. Don't know if you can see it out. There we go. So let's get all the glue off the inside of the connector, if possible. Like that. Where's my tweezers? There we go. Got rid of that bit. Right, so now I guess I'll just plug them back in. Now I've got all the glue off. All of these little bits here, this is all of the glue that I've been getting out of these connectors. There is this connector here which looks like it's been under a lot of stress because it's actually cracked. Now that the glue around there was cracked when I took this board out so I don't know how long it's been under the stress for but this is a cable that drives the driver in the subwoofer speaker so I don't think this will be the cause of my output signal problems. The cause of my problem is more likely to be one of these connectors that I've just cleaned out or something to do with the soldering around here. But I've checked all of the solder points and I can't see any weak connections or any cracks in any of the connections. So I don't think it's that. But all over the back of this board, I don't know how well you can see it, like down here, yeah, there looks like what's possibly leftover flux residue from when it was manufactured. So I'm just going to get some IPA and clean all of this residue off. Okay, I've gone and got some isopropanol, isopropyl alcohol, IPA, whatever you want to call it, and an old toothbrush. And I'll just clean the residual flux off of this PCB. 
and you hold it in the light so I can actually see what I'm doing. Now I just need to let all of this evaporate. I can't see any faults wrong with this PCB, but it may not be a visible fault. It could be a trace issue in the PCB, or it could be something else. I, I don't know. I don't have a multimeter, so I can't test the polarities, because I know that if the ground isn't connected to ground, it can cause like a static hiss noise to come through the speakers. But I can't test for issues like that, because I don't have a multimeter. Okay, I don't know how well you'll be able to see this. I think I just had it then. If I hold the light about there, you can see this third pin in from the right doesn't have a lot of solder on it. So if you look at the majority of these pins, they all have like, I guess you could say like a solder pool, sort of around where the pin connects to the PCB, except for this third pin in here from the right. So could that be a potential cause of the issues I'm having? Personally, I have no idea if this could cause those issues. I don't even know what that pin corresponds to. But anyone that does have a better knowledge of sort of PCB design than me, because my knowledge for PCB design is pretty much non-existent, is this a common thing? And what these pins are is they are the legs to one of these PCB mounted components. I don't even know the name of them. It's what had this big heatsink attached to it. Yeah, I don't really know what to say. So there's a third pin from the right underneath, so it will be the third pin from the left on top. Looking at this PCB bit from the top, it doesn't actually look like there's any surface area in which solder could be applied to it. So maybe that leg of that component doesn't need to be connected. So I can't see any obvious traces going away from it or to it. I think right now I've pretty much reached the end of my knowledge on what to do here. But I've been messing around with this speaker now, or rather this subwoofer, for probably about the past two and a half, three hours. I've reached a crossroads, I don't know what to do next, so I think I'm just going to reassemble the subwoofer once I've plugged everything back in, that is, which is going to be pretty entertaining to say the least. So let the reassembly time lapse begin. Well, it looks like I no longer have a 2.1 setup. Looks like I now have a 2.0 setup because my subwoofer just broke off. I'll continue to put it back together and see if my two speakers work. If they don't work, then I presume everything must go through this and that this needs to be connected in order for it to work. But it looks like I'll be needing some new speakers now, so yeah. On today's trying to fix, I end up breaking the uh, Subwoofer, not intentionally, but from the moment I saw that connector, I did think it was under quite a lot of stress, so yeah. Right, so let me see if my speakers still work or not. Nope, that's the wrong output. While the speakers do work, Somehow I fixed the right speaker. The right speaker seems to work fine now, but the left speaker is the one that's intermittent and keeps cutting in and out. So now what I think I'll do is, well, I guess I'll recycle these speakers because... So I haven't been able to find a fix, and in the process of me attempting to fix them, I ended up damaging them even further. So I guess I'll recycle them. I think these speakers are actually okay. These are... These two speakers, I think these are actually okay. The problem is this control board here. So I guess I will recycle the subwoofer. Should I keep that driver? 
I'm tempted to keep the driver because I don't th I don't think there's anything wrong with the driver. But then again, I'm not an audio specialist, so I don't really have any use for... I guess I'll keep it. I'll probably never use it, but you never know. One day I might use it. So I guess now that the subwoofer doesn't work and I've decided to essentially scrap it, well not scrap it, I'll recycle it and dispose of it appropriately, but uh, I guess I'll just go ahead and finish off with the teardown because it doesn't work anymore. And it's no longer in warranty so I can't claim warranty and it's not like it was a really expensive speaker set to begin with. So I haven't really lost an investment because it was cheap anyway. Let me just dismantle this and hopefully I can get out the actual power supply board in here as well. I've already shown you the control panel. I am going to be a bit rougher with it now because it's already broken. I've decided that I'm not going to keep it so I'm not really bothered if I further damage it. Right, that should be this control panel out. That is that control panel out. Taking a look inside the subwoofer here, we can see the main power board and the construction of the subwoofer is just made out of MDF with this open tube thing that goes down to the other end. As you can see, there's nothing in the tube. Right, now I need to try and get this power board out. And it looks like there's a screw there. There's a screw in the other corner and it just looks like those two screws, that one and that one that I need to unscrew and then I should just be able to sort of lift it up and slide it out by the look of it. I need to try and get that glue out of those screws. No, I don't need to try and get the glue out. The glue's like silicone stuff. I can just unscrew the screw with all the glue still in there because it's, yeah. Right, now there's this side, which this tube is in the way. Can I break this tube off? I don't want to end up injuring myself. Right, I'll just try and unscrew this screw as best as I can from here. Now, I need to get this tube out, but I don't want to injure myself on one of these edges here. Crowbar! There we go! Good old trusty crowbar! <laughs> Right, I've now got that tube out. Just glued in place. Right, the PCB is loose and I just need to get this other screw out. Okay, there's the other screw. And here's a little power board. So this is the subwoofer construction. It is just MDF wood with a plastic tube in, a power board and this control panel slash output panel. Right, are there any more screws or anything that I can salvage? Doesn't look like it. Right, that can go off to the recycling center for their wood recycling, whatever they do. Now I've taken everything apart and removed these PCBs, I think I might as well do the same to this. So this is just a little volume knob. There's an on off switch, as you can see there. And on the other side, there's a headphone jack. Anyway, let's go ahead and pull this bit off because it is just a press fit. And then under here we have a weight which just adds a bit of weight to this little like plastic volume contraption because without it it would be very light and chances are just the weight of the cable going behind your desk would probably pull it off the desk. There's a weight, I don't know how much it weighs, I don't have a scales on me, but now this is very, very, very light. And then we have three more screws here, which I shall get on to removing. So there's the screws out. So now taking the top off, we get to the PCB. Now this connector here is detachable. So yes, I can just lift it out. It's not glued in. And let me just detach the PCB from this little plastic housing bit. Now with everything taken apart, I shall get on to the PCBs. 
So here are the three PCBs that I've taken out of the speaker set during the teardown. Now I will point out when it comes to PCB design and just sort of technical knowledge regarding PCBs, I have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about. So I'll probably just give you a look over the PCBs and nothing else because I don't know what to say when it comes to PCBs. So starting with the smallest, this is the PCB that I just tore down out of the little volume control. Oh, let's pull that little plastic bit off which goes on the switch there. It looks like a very simple, possibly a one layer PCB. Underneath it looks like that. If I turn it the right way up so you can at least read the little numbers and stuff on there. You can see the traces going to and forth the different components. There's the LED power light, there's the 3.5mm jack, the little connector bit the on off switch of course and then in the middle we have a potentiometer down here it looks like we have the pinout regarding this connector uh, of course we've got the on off bit there that's for the volume this potentiometer and we've got all of this writing up here so was this when it was manufactured the 13th the 7th 2015 uh, volume pcb version pb2 and they're just what I presume are manufacturing marks and like serial codes and stuff. So that's a little volume PCB. Now going over to these two PCBs, I'll start off with this one which is the power supply PCB. And my knowledge for this PCB is completely out of the window. I've got no idea what any of this stuff is or what any of this stuff does. I know like there's capacitors and heat sinks and little resistors and bigger resistors and things like that. But what they do, I honestly don't know. So I guess I shall just give you an overview of the board. So it looks like this on the front, or on the sort of top view looking down on it. Then the underneath where the traces are, looks like that. And yeah, this is just the power supply PCB. And finally, we have this I.O. slash control panel board that was in the PCB. So on the back here, there's the like I.O., the input and the output. So the black and blue connector here, they were for the left and right speakers. I never used the red and white ones, but I believe they were if you wanted to input a device into the speakers or something like that. I've never done that. I don't know how that works. And then up here we had the potentiometer which basically controlled how much base you wanted this subwoofer to output. Now like I did with the other PCBs I'll just hold it up and sort of give you a view of what the PCB looks like. Because I don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to PCBs as I've already said. So as we can see there's lots of little tiny components and little... Uh, what are they? Resistors? Capacitors? Something like that. Maybe, maybe none of those, maybe both of them. I don't know. And there we've got those connectors that we went over earlier in the video so we know what they correspond to. And then we've just got like loads of little numbers and stuff which correspond to the components and the PCB traces and things like that, I presume. Down here we have two connectors. This connector here is the DC in, so that was where the power was fed into this board. And this connector here which is the one that actually failed on me and snapped was where the subwoofer driver was plugged into but when I was putting the subwoofer back together the cable like connector inserts that should be in those holes just like broke off and well came disconnected but as you can see all the glue around there is like cracked and this connector is really wobbly now the cracking of that glue and the wobbliness of the connector was not caused by me at least I don't think it was because I'm sure that when I first removed this PCB this connector was really wobbly and sort of a bad connection as it was what I presume straight out of the factory because the cable that was connected to it was a really short cable so it was put under a lot of stress Anyway, this is the top side of the board. We have this component here. That's the one that had the heat sink on it. So I presume that gets pretty hot. I've no idea what it does. Uh, but yeah, that's really an overview of this PCB from the top. Now I'm flipping underneath, we can just find like sort of the basic trace layout and this small amount of information here. And that's really it regarding these three PCBs. 
And that brings us to the end of this video. Now, initially, I did set out with the intentions of finding the cause of my issues regarding the output from my speakers not being equal. And I was hoping I would find a fix to that, but unfortunately I didn't find a fix to that and stuff took a turn for the worse, in which I somehow accidentally ended up breaking the connection of my subwoofer's driver from the PCB. So when I did that, I turned my 2.1 setup, so that would be two satellite speakers and one subwoofer, into a 2.0 setup, which is just two satellite speakers and zero subwoofers, or no subwoofer, I guess. Can you have plural of subwoofers? I guess you can have more than one subwoofer, but I've never really seen a sort of a home setup with more than one subwoofer. Anyway, that's getting off topic. But despite me accidentally ruining my subwoofer, I did go ahead and plug in the remaining two satellite speakers to see if the output was somewhat equal. And somehow the circumstances had changed. So previously, the left speaker was the good speaker, so to say, or the left speaker was receiving a clean signal, and the right speaker was the one that was receiving the intermittent signal. Somehow that had switched around. So the right speaker was the good speaker or receiving the clean signal and the left speaker was the one that was then receiving the intermittent signal. So I don't know what happened there. I don't think I wired them up wrong because they are colour coded and there's only two connections. So yeah, it's something that I did made the signal switch or something like that. But after all of the sort of messing about and efforts I went through only to not find a fix and in fact further damage the speaker set, I thought it would just be easier if I just forget about the speaker set and recycle them. But anyway, that has been it for this video so if you have enjoyed this video give it a like if you haven't then give it a dislike consider subscribing to see future uploads and as always thank you for watching